Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotac and the iPad Pro is my go-to device when I'm not editing videos. In fact, it probably gets more use than my iPhone at times as I use it for everything when I'm not making videos from taking notes to just maybe watching YouTube, watching different videos and more. And so I thought we'd talk about the overall use of it after being out for six months since I use it every single day. We'll take a look at durability, scratches, the display and the new features as well as iPad Pro 12.9 battery life. Now this particular variant is the 12.9 inch iPad Pro M2 with Wi-Fi and cellular. It also has one terabyte of storage, which means it has 16 gigabytes of RAM. You can bump this up to two terabytes. I don't really need it. Now, as far as the design, for the most part, it's the exact same as last year. In fact, here's the M1 iPad next to it from last year, and you can see there's no difference whatsoever, at least other than the colors that we have here, since I got silver to set it apart from last year. So no differences whatsoever as far as that. You can't really tell just from looking at it. However, it does have that M2 chipset inside. Now, as far as durability, I haven't ever used a screen protector on this one, and I typically just leave it in that keyboard. The Magic Keyboard keeps it safe, and it holds up well. While it is fairly flexible, if you were to flex it just a little bit, you can do that, but it's not typically how you're using it. I put it in a backpack all the time, but it's inside that Magic Keyboard, which adds rigidity and more, so no issues there. However, not using a screen protector, it is protected by that case, but I do have the smallest scratch right there. And I don't know if you can see it under this light right at the end of my finger here. You can kind of see a scratch. That's the only one I've seen, but in general, it doesn't seem to have any whatsoever. So as far as it holding up well, because it's been in that Magic Keyboard, no scratches or anything like that. I've never dropped it or anything, and the Magic Keyboard's kept it safe. We'll talk more about that a little bit later, since I used that for two years. I actually brought it over from the previous iPad to this one so that I could actually just use it and not have to pay $350 again for it. So it's a very expensive keyboard, but it seems to work well. Now, as far as overall battery life, of course, that's one of the big concerns with the iPad and with the 12.9 inch, you get a huge battery and currently based off of coconut battery, I have 76 cycles. So the battery has been charged to, and then discharged 100% about 76 times, meaning it could be 50% one day, 50% the next that adds up to hundred percent. That's one full cycle. You can also see that according to coconut battery, the battery health is at about 99%. And so it's holding up well it seems to be fine based off previous years it's doing about the same now you can see my battery usage i charged it to 77 percent 38 minutes ago but before that i didn't charge it for a couple days so i was getting about eight hours nine hours of screen on time you can see here a couple days ago three hours and 15 minutes and then the other day five hours and 16 minutes it's actually lasting me about six to eight hours, depending on how I'm using it. So it's doing fine. Finally, it's been fixed with some updates, it seems, and is working just fine. This is actually running a beta right now as well. iPad OS 16.5 beta two at the time of this video. However, the betas have been fine on this and generally works quite well. I haven't had a whole lot of issues with bugs and more like I have on the iPhone. Now the display is really quite good. It's the same display as last year with a mini LED display and it's great for HDR movies since it's super bright. So it can go up to about 1600 nits of brightness in HDR and looks great, has great viewing angles. And I know some complain about the bloom when you're on a very dark background, but I typically don't see that because I'm normally on a screen like this, or if I go into YouTube, you're not seeing just a black background all the time. So it really isn't too much of a concern unless you work on completely black backgrounds, maybe with art or something else. It does bother my eyes, however, from time to time, as it does technically use PWM. This is according to notebook check. The frequency is very high, so it shouldn't bother most. But for example, the iPad pro flickers at 6,401 Hertz, whereas the iPhone is about 480 Hertz at 39% brightness or higher or 240 Hertz below that. So it's at such a high frequency. It really shouldn't bother your eyes. And I thought it was just my eyes recently, but I've been using a different tablet in testing that I'll have a review you on later, which doesn't have PWM and I've had zero eye strain from it where I do get some eye strain from time to time with this iPad. So it's just something worth noting.
Now the new feature this year is great for artists and that's hover, hover the iPads pencil above it or the Apple pencil. And it makes the icons a little bit larger as you get closer. And then you can go into different applications. If we go into something like pages, they've updated them as well. And within just a sample page here, if I bring the pencil close, you can see here, we can pick between different things. And then if I bring the pencil close, you can hover above it. It also has tilt and azimuth support. So if I'm directly at a 90 degree angle, we have a dot. If I tilt to the side, we have a, a thicker line where I could shade or do something else. This is supported across different apps if they choose to turn that on. So it's really great. As far as hover goes, you can see where you're actually going to interact with the pencil. And I think every app should support it if they don't already. So it's a great feature for sure. And something that's nice. I don't know that I'd run out and get an iPad just for that, unless you're an artist that uses it all the time. Now, as far as external monitors, I do use it from time to time and may use it more eventually. If I do a full switch to this with editing videos, maybe with final cut pro in the future, Luma fusion just got a big update. And so I may look into using this more and more, but I typically use a Mac for that. Now I'm not a huge fan of stage manager though, while it works well, I tend to think that using this just on the iPad is great as a portable device, but when you're editing, you have that large screen. If you have a studio display, like I'm showing you here, it works fine and you can move through things, whether that be with the touch screen, the mouse or magic keyboard. Now the M2 processor is super fast. It has a hundred gigabytes per second memory bandwidth has ProRes and code and decode engines and hardware accelerated H.264, HEVC, ProRes and ProRes raw. So it's super powerful, but really there's not a whole lot utilizing that power. I've never felt that it's fast or any slower than what we have with the M1 iPad. So going into different apps tend to load pretty fast, although this might be a little slow due to my overall connection, but things are just super fast. ProMotion works well going into different apps. We updated DaVinci Resolve. I haven't opened it for a while. Go into that. Give it a second to load here. Of course, it's going to be a little bit slow when I'm showing it on video, but you'll see we opened it up and now we're in the app. So going into that and then maybe going into Swift Playgrounds, go back into DaVinci Resolve, going into multitasking works well, going into an app, going back to the last app. Everything is just super fluid and fast. I really have no complaints and I don't notice a difference at all between the M1 and M2. Now, if I was editing videos full time and then exporting them, you may see a difference here, but with regular day to day use, you really won't see a difference. Now, as far as cellular and Wi-Fi, well, it's been fine for me on the iPad. I'm on Wi-Fi currently, but it's nice that I have this connected to cellular. If I'm on the go, I need to use it to upload or just maybe research something. If I'm creating notes for a video, it seems to be great. No issues there with 5g or anything like that. You'll see if I disconnect here, it will jump right to 5g. Of course, it depends on your carrier as far as overall coverage, but it seems to be really well sorted on the iPad as opposed to the iPhone for some reason. Now the software is great, but it feels like it's lacking. It's basically just a giant iPhone at this point with a few different software updates that are advanced, such as DaVinci Resolve and Luma Fusion. However, Apple has still not released Final Cut Pro for this or the Logic Pro app or any of their major pro apps. And I really think they should, whether that means buying Luma Fusion or just implementing what they have, I think would be a great move. And hopefully we'll see that at WWDC. That's my one downside with this. Typically, if I'm taking notes for a video, I'll have Safari open, maybe with a note and craft. And then side by side, you can just control the size, research what you're doing, go back and forth, bring in another app if you need to. It's just really great to use and very simple. And now, like I said, I use the magic keyboard all of the time, and this really makes this more of a laptop and a tablet at the same time. So to me, the magic keyboard is a must have accessory. So not only does it protect it and keep it safe when you're not using it and add rigidity, but it's just great to have that keyboard and mouse available when you want to use it, whether that's going in again, back to craft taping, taking some new notes. This is a new note. It works fine. It's a backlit keyboard and it's just something that I think is a necessity. It doesn't have to be the magic keyboard, but I think a keyboard really brings this to life, especially with a trackpad. So, something I really would highly recommend and I definitely will use in the future. Now, as far as durability of the magic keyboard, this is two years old or a year and a half at this point, And it's held up pretty well being that it's the white variant. It has a few stains on it. You can see here it 
got nicked by something. But again, it's protecting the iPad and still works fine. So in general, it's held up pretty well. There's no edges that have frayed. It's just gotten a little bit dirty. And I have cleaned it regularly, but some of the stains just don't come off very easily. So that's unfortunate, but I try to keep it as clean as I can. I might recommend the darker variant of this if you have particular dirty environments or you need to just have it hidden a little bit from that because it did seem to hold up a little bit better that way. It didn't show as many stains or things like that. Now, if you're wondering if you should upgrade to the M2 iPad Pro, well, if you have an M1, I would say absolutely not, unless you have to have the hover feature. If you have to have hover, well, then definitely upgrade. Otherwise, that's the only reason to upgrade at all. I would say stick with the M1 iPad Pro for now until Apple updates it significantly if you don't care about the hover feature. Other than that, I don't think the speed is a big enough upgrade. The battery life is about the same. Everything else is about the same completely. So no really big differences there. The speakers are great. They sound fantastic. And just going into YouTube and watching videos, it really is something that I use, like I said, every single day for that. So there's not much more to say other than I use it as basic consumption and a note taking device and for everything when I'm not using my Mac to actually create videos. I highly recommend one. It doesn't have to be the 12.9, but definitely try out an iPad pro if you haven't at least in the store, these can be a bit pricey, but they seem to last fine for years. And I think we'll get iPad OS support for at least five years. Like we do with iPhone it seems to be holding up just fine, especially now that it has the Mac processor in it. I would love to see a Mac OS, maybe variant when you plug it into a monitor, maybe have that incorporated. Maybe we'll see it in the future. Maybe we won't, but either way, it's my favorite device Apple's ever made. In my opinion, one thing I almost forgot completely to mention is the cameras on the device. Now, now, the forward facing camera I use all the time in different meetings with zoom meetings and more. So it actually does a really good job as far as center stage and things like that. So if we flip this around here, you can see it can actually center me quite nicely and it does a great job if you just want to use it for recording. So if we go to video here and let's back that up just a little bit, you can see the lights and camera around me and now we're recording from the iPad pro. So if you want to record something quickly, whether that's a zoom meeting or something else, it works great for that. However, I almost forgot about the cameras because I never use the rear camera. Now it does have ProRes. If you want to use maybe Filmic Pro with it, you can use ProRes with it, but it's not something I use regularly. Even though the cameras do a really great job, they're good. They're not as good as the iPhones. The problem is with the iPhone, it's difficult to get ProRes footage off of it, where with the iPad, you actually have USB-C, which makes it easier. So it's great that it's there. You can use it maybe for storyboarding, or on the go, but I wouldn't bring this to a concert and hold it up. You'd block people's views and things like that, but they're great. They're usable. It's great for scanning a room with the LIDAR sensor as a tool, maybe to sense depth and things as far as that goes, but it's not something I would take regular photos with unless it's your only camera. It does a good job, but again, I completely forgot about it almost because of that. The forward facing camera is just something I use regularly to blur the background and more. So it's works fine as you would expect. And that's what Apple does best is get things out of the way so you can use the technology. Let me know what you think of the iPad pro in the comments below. And I'll link this wallpaper in the description that I have on my iPhone as well. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.